Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on finding Z scores for the standard normal distribution on a Casio FXCG50. For the standard normal distribution we have Z which is normally distributed with a mean of 0 and a variance of 1 squared therefore the standard deviation is 1. And for the first three parts of the question we've got to find the probabilities from given Z scores and for the second two parts there we've got to find the relevant values given the probabilities. Now we're going to do this in distribution mode on the FXCG50 so from the menu it's down to I distribution and then from there select normal. Now I reset the calculator prior to this video so I actually have the default settings displayed currently which are actually suitable for us for finding Z scores. Now, if you don't have this, don't worry, you can change these. You've perhaps got previous values from calculations that you've done. Now, the default tail is the lower tail, which we need for part A. We're looking for the probability that Z is less than negative 0.6. So we want the lower tail. If it's not selected for you, press F1 to select that. We're going to change X in this case to minus negative 0.6 and I've got the standard deviation of 1 and the mean of 0 as default. If they're not that for you then just change them now. And once you've got that then press execute to confirm and you can see that the graph is then produced. We've got the probability that we were looking for here at the top 0.2742 and we've got the relevant area has been shaded in on the graph to show what proportion is relevant for us. Moving on to part B, we're actually going to stick in the graph part of distribution mode to answer this, but we need to change the tail first. So let's press option and we want to select the upper tail. We're looking for the probability Z is greater than 1.2. So it's F4 for the upper tail. We also want to change the X value. Remember X is being used in lieu of Z. So we've got X on the calculator, that's just a standard. But remember we're looking for Z scores. So the probability that Z is greater than 1.2. So let's input 1.2 in there and press execute. And here we have a probability 0.115. And you can see it's shaded there. We've got 11.5% of the values shaded in the upper tail of the distribution. Incidentally, just a little reminder as well, remember that the normal distribution is a continuous distribution and we can use greater than and greater than or equal to interchangeably. The calculator by default shows greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Part C then, we're looking for a central region this time. So Z is between negative one and one and we're looking for the probability of a value being in that region. You should still have the option menu displayed here. If not, just press option and it's F3 there for the central region. We've got two boxes to change our X and hence our Z values. So we want the lower bound to be negative one and then navigate right. We want to change the upper bound to one and press execute. And here we have the relevant probability 0.6826 and the appropriate region shaded. Now you may recognize this figure if you're familiar with the normal distribution. You should know that approximately 68% or 68 and a quarter percent of all values lie within one standard deviation above or one standard deviation below the mean. And we've got that displayed here. Moving on to part D now, we're looking for Z is less than D, which is some value we need to find. And the probability of that equaling 0.95. Now we're still going to stick with the graph part of distribution mode, but we do need to alter the tail back to the lower tail, so press F2. And this time we're going to change the probability, so navigate right to the probability there, and we're going to change that to the value for part D, 0.95, then execute. And you can see that where the calculator has the X value, that's going to be the Z value that's relevant for part D. So 1.6448. Now 
so you know that 95% of values are below that Z score of 1.6448. And of course, therefore, 5% are in the unshaded upper tail region there. And this sort of information can be very useful if you need that for some sort of hypothesis test where you're looking for a Z score to test against a critical value. Part E then, and this time we have a central region that we need to find. We're looking for an upper and lower bound in the center where that central region is 0.99 or 99% of all the values. So we need to change to central region once again, which is F3. We will keep the X boxes blank. They will change when we change the probability, navigate to the probability box, and we're going to alter that to 0.99 and press execute. We've got the majority of the graph is shaded, 99% of it. And up at the top here, we've got the Z values that we're looking for for part E. So upper bound of 2.5758 and a lower bound of negative 2.575. I believe that lower bound has been truncated. It is just going to be the negative version of the same value for the upper bound. It's just they've probably not quite got enough space to display it on the calculator. And if we look very closely, we can see that there's tiny little unshaded regions, both in the lower tail and the upper tail. Well, together they represent the missing 1%. So separately, there's 0.5% of all values in those regions. So 0.5% in the upper tail, 0.5% in the lower tail. And again, that could be useful to you if you're answering questions with regards to hypothesis testing. So there we go, how we can work with and find Z scores from the standard normal distribution using the Casio FX CG50 and the distribution mode. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time on The Calculator Guide.